how to make money using a March Madness strategy. Welcome in. We've all heard the term Moneyball, how data and probabilities are key in professional sports. Today, let's look at how using a winning March Madness strategy can actually help you make money. And then I'm gonna give you five pointers for making money using these simple principles. Now we know trades, performance, point spreads, injuries, betting, scouting, drafts, free agency, TV contracts, endorsements, brand building, and even the science of business ownership for a financial life after sports for the sports professionals. Folks, if it's sports, it's often about the money and show me the money. Let's look at March Madness Basketball as first reported by Ben Cohen in the Wall Street Journal in 2023. He showcased underdog teams upsetting the higher seeded teams. Turns out it's not a fluke and it's not rocket science, but it is the same simple math and observation that can help you make money with your investments. And here's why. Consider the strategy of Princeton coach Pete Carell, who devised a methodical offense for his underdog Princeton University. Now they were up against top seeded UCLA and the coach's strategy was to do two things, milk the clock and then in search of good shots. Think of this as two dynamics here. First, stretch out and use up time. Have patience. Many of us remember Rope-A-Dope by Muhammad Ali. Well, Coach Carell slowed the pace of the game, decreasing the number of possessions by his higher seated opponent. This increased the potential for success. Princeton, the underdog, made sure UCLA had fewer opportunities to shoot. Now second, Princeton's offense really cracked the code of the three-pointer. The coach imagined that three-pointers were worth more than two-pointers. Duh, like 50% more. Now you're watching What's Next With Money, a program with smart insights to guide your financial decisions. In the 1996 NCAA basketball tournament, 13 seed Princeton upset defending national champions, national champion UCLA by a score of 43 to 41. Slow down the game and shoot threes. Now this introduced that dynamic of randomness that confused UCLA. And folks, this was at a time when shooting threes was new as Wall Street Journal reporter Cohen cites other examples, but also says luck has a lot to do with it. Now, when you think of it, many of us can identify luck in our personal work and investing life. Luck was there, like making some good decisions and staying within our growing competencies, working networks and managing risk. But luck as defined, many of us have heard this, is when preparation meets opportunity. A good marriage, thoughtful, intentional education and training, and taking prudent risk. And more about that in many of our other videos. Or as Cohen says, success is a measure of how we respond to circumstances. Princeton created conditions that altered and confused the responses of their more talented opponent. Princeton had to do something bold. They were absolutely the underdog. And they relied on the duh principle of three pointers are better than two pointers. Now, if you're getting value from this video, please be sure to hit that subscribe and smash that like button. This helps move our content to more folks and it's free. So you might ask, what, what does a high school lettered swimmer, that's, that's me, know about sports? Well, not a lot, but I know about money and people. And I have advised some moms of NFL and NBA stars on financial literacy. I helped with NFL Rookie Camp in Carlsbad, California, and community events sponsored by the NFL Players Association in Miami. And they gave me this cool jacket. Plus, I worked with the NCAA and the National Council on Problem Gambling on sports financial issues. So how can this help you with money? So here are the five pointers, instead of just three pointers, I'm giving you five. Number one, in stock or mutual fund ETFs, exchange traded fund selections, 
reduce the number that you're picking and certainly the frequency of trades. We can drain out extra financial busyness, which can create short-term thinking. When you're really not about short-term, you're about the business of growing long-term money for retirement and other goals that are shorter. Regular monthly investing in a Roth IRA and or 401k, we lessen the emotion. We take our time. We look for good opportunities. We automate many of these decisions and refuse to buy randomly or emotionally. We also can focus on our holdings, pick our shots, which in this case are our trades. We don't swing at every pitch and plot when we can get three pointers. Plus with longer, slower play, as if in let's say a taxable brokerage account, which is a non-retirement account, we might capture lower capital gains rates on sales if we have our holdings held for a year or more. Now here's number two, what about free throws in investing? Yes. Say you're fouled. In this case, the market is down or bearish and you get an opportunity. You get this opportunity. If the market is down, you can add to your points one free throw at a time. Now this takes practice because imagine it's like shooting free throws on the road. The crowd, in this case, the market sentiment will be against you. The crowd is fearful. They're gonna yell at you that you're stupid and it's hopeless for investing in this panic or bear market environment. But you know better. Three pointers are better than two or one pointers. So you fire some shots, some investment money during this market downturn. And in many cases, you're gonna be doing it automatically anyway through monthly investing because you know the market's on sale. It's like getting three points for every free throw in these low price conditions. And as our friend Warren Buffett says, be fearful when others are greedy, be greedy when others are fearful. Here's number three, be slow to take your winnings and keep your retirement investings uh, for other goals like education, small business or charity keep them steady and compounding. Don't time the market. Run out the clock while holding and keeping your money invested. Know why you're investing, the goal, the longer time horizon. The long game is the tournament of life, so don't foul out, take your time. There's no shot clock in investing and the only compelling tax and investment opportunities are usually measured in annual to five year long intervals. But folks, for retirement compounding, it's measured in decades. Number four, exploit annual contribution limits. Employer matches, like getting that free money. And long-term, one year long holding periods, lower capital gains rates on those non-retirement brokerage accounts. Check your retirement investing statements infrequently. I say that, infrequently. Now, Ben Carlson, uh, the great blogger in The Wealth of Common Sense, we quote him a lot. He says, what if you literally didn't check your retirement statements, let's say mid 20s to age 70? He says you might want to have a doctor on hand in case you have a heart attack when you open that statement because the numbers will be so big. And here's point number five, auto enrollment, auto escalation and dollar cost averaging are like shooting three pointers each month. You're automatically in your retirement account. You may, through auto escalation, pre-commit next year and in future years to increase the amount of your contributions, capturing parts of future raises. And then dollar cost averaging is simply adding money each month, the same amount, and when the market's lower, you buy more shares. It's like shooting three pointers. Now they keep you in the game. You build momentum and muscle memory of what works. And you're putting up points on the board each month, often while you sleep. You don't have to think about it. So remember, three pointers are better than two pointers. And if you wanna know about 10 pointers, or as they're known in the investing world, 10 baggers, watch our videos, invest in what you know, parts one and two, and we have links. Since we're talking sports and I'm investing, here's a photo of me with Rocky, the Denver Nuggets world champion super mascot. 
So be sure to hit that subscribe and that like button and don't forget to share. I'm Brent Neiser looking to see you next time on What's Next with Money.